Welcome to today's special edition, where we unravel the mysteries behind XRP's meteoric rise to a staggering $59,000, surpassing even Bitcoin in value. This episode is packed with insights, so make sure you stick around till the very end. As always, welcome back to MoneySide, your go-to spot for everything XRP related. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for up-to-the-minute updates on all our XRP discussions. Enjoying my content? Show some love by hitting the thumbs up and share your views down in the comments. Supporters of Ripple's XRP have been vocal about its unparalleled potential for cross-border payments. If you're an investor or simply curious, you'll want to jot down some key price points we're about to discuss. In an astonishing twist, Ripple supporters have forecasted XRP's price trajectory. But the surprises don't end there. David Schwartz, Ripple's CTO, has shed light on XRP's realistic price range, and we're here to delve into those details. Our journey kicks off with essential XRP XRP price milestones. These insights come from a notable Twitter handle, 25 hours as you can see away. While the account primarily advises marking XRP values on trading charts, predictions lack specific dates or times. This intrigued me. Had they indicated, for example, that XRP would touch $13.59 on July 12th, skepticism would be valid. But their strategy is different. They tie price hikes to specific events, making their predictions seem more grounded. Now, here's something crucial. Recent developments in the Ripple SEC lawsuit have confirmed that XRP isn't a security. Yet, the legal battle rages on. Many speculate an eventual settlement might conclude this saga. The possibility of a settlement remains on the table. It's logical to conclude that if this settlement concludes the Ripple SEC lawsuit favorably, XRP could see a substantial surge in value. Moving on to the next point, XRP's accessibility across exchanges. It's evident that most major exchanges, with a few exceptions, have relisted XRP. This includes giants like Coinbase and Binance. To be candid, the expected spike in XRP's value post-relisting wasn't as pronounced as many had hoped. The underlying reason? The lawsuit wasn't settled at that time. It's conceivable that if all these factors had aligned simultaneously, XRP might have experienced a more dramatic increase in value. From my research, I sense that the surge in XRP's value might be impending, a sort of latent momentum waiting to be unleashed. The third point to discuss is an intriguing price prediction. $2,940.34. This figure is associated with Ripple's upcoming IPO, which stands for Initial Public Offer. Offering. There's talk of major banks partnering with Ripple. Let's face it, with Ripple moving towards an IPO and more prominent institutions warming up to XRP, it's a scenario that makes sense. The XRP ledger could witness a substantial influx in value and market volume. Consequently, with increased demand and limited supply, we might see a forced appreciation in XRP's price. Even if individuals decide to sell, the overwhelming demand from financial institutions, upcoming IPOs, and potential banking partners will be hard to ignore. This collective demand could drive a notable surge in XRP's value. Let's also consider a sentiment expressed multiple times, highlighted by a tweet from David Schwartz. Banks are in favor of stable currencies. The financial world craves a digital asset that doesn't fluctuate wildly. Ensuring this stability might necessitate positioning XRP at a higher valuation. Even Arthur Brito, a co-founder of Ripple, echoes this sentiment. In a piece from June 3, 2023, Brito forecasted XRP's value could soar to $10,000 considering its global scalability. He emphasized that as more entities realize XRP's potential and scalability, its demand will skyrocket. Higher valuations of XRP mean decreased volatility, a transition from an XRP worth a dollar to one that holds steady. Picture this, instead of exchanging a dollar for 10 XRP now, you do so a few moments later, with minimal fluctuation. This consistent stability is enticing for financial institutions. The idea of XRP priced at $10,000 isn't far-fetched, especially when it's coming from Ripple's co-founder. David Schwartz, sometimes known by the moniker Jolcats and also Ripple's CTO, shared a similar viewpoint on November 20th, 2017. He suggested an even loftier potential. XRP could touch $1 million per coin. Schwartz stated, and I quote, if XRP is at $1, you'd need a million XRP for a $1 million transaction. But if XRP is worth $1 million a piece, 
You'd only need one. He alludes to the inverse relationship. Higher values result in cheaper transactions. For instance, while a Bitcoin might trade at $1 million today, its volatility at lower prices makes it less attractive for larger transactions. Schwartz's point? A higher valuation means cheaper and smoother transactions. Therefore, if XRP's value drops significantly, its volatility might deter its widespread adoption. Using XRP would become highly impractical for financial institutions if its value were too volatile. Transitioning to a recent development, I stumbled upon something intriguing from Forbes, which I believe is of utmost importance. I found a recent tweet from the account named 25 Hours a Week, which reported breaking news. According to this tweet, Forbes published an article suggesting XRP could potentially become the successor to Bitcoin, forecasting its value to touch a staggering $59,472. However, the article was abruptly taken down after its release. The tweet cites Forbes as its direct source, lending credibility to the information. Notably, this isn't Forbes's first brush with retracting content related to XRP. My research unearthed a similar incident from five months ago. The title of that now-removed article was Why the SEC Treats Ripple and Ethereum Differently. It seems Forbes has a precedent of pulling articles if they believe the content doesn't align with certain interests. Given this pattern, it's plausible that the recent report on XRP's potential value was legitimate, further solidifying the notion that XRP might just reach the ballpark of $60,000 per token. Before we delve deeper into how XRP's value might be intertwined with congressional interests and federal policy, and speaking of federal involvement, Rosario's role is hard to overlook. A former U.S. Treasury official, whose likeness graces the $100 bill, Rosario joined Ripple's board about a year ago. With her vast experience and influence, she's now a vocal proponent of Ripple. In fact, Rosario has often voiced her strong belief that Ripple and XRP are on an unstoppable trajectory. Recently, I stumbled upon a statement she made earlier this month that further reinforces her conviction. But before we delve into that, let's take a brief detour and revisit her rationale for supporting XRP through a quick clip. It has been in the headlines frequently, and for clarity, I'd like to remind everyone that I'm on the board of Ripple, and XRP is essentially the backbone of Ripple. Whenever I'm posed with the question, why did you decide to join Ripple's board? My response is simple. I believe in the utility of XRP. It's not just a speculative asset or a mere store of value. Its primary function facilitates smoother cross-border transactions. It's what credible financial institutions rely on, especially for international transfers. Gone are the days where such transactions took days and drained dollars. With XRP, we're talking about mere seconds and cents. I'm convinced this is the future. Once again, it's the utility of XRP that sets it apart in the realm of crypto. Notably, her endorsement was voiced around the time XRP was deliberated upon as a security, on July 14th. But what stands out is how seamlessly Rosario's ties with Congress and the federal government intertwine with Ripple. It's hard to imagine a scenario where Ripple doesn't succeed, be it in its legal tussle with the SEC, its broader regulatory landscape, or any other facet integral to its growth. It's primed for success. Reflecting on this, Rosario once tweeted, Now, who's boarding the train? Please remember, I am not a licensed financial advisor. The content presented in these videos is purely for entertainment purposes. I always encourage viewers to conduct their own research and consult with professionals before making any financial decisions. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure you turn on the notifications to be the first to know when I release new content. I'm excited to catch up with you in the upcoming video. Take care!